I've been making some landing gear for my nifty net. So I thought I would do a video just showing the beer can wheels again. I have that in another video. I don't really show a lot of detail on how I make them, so I thought I'd do that now. You want to start with empty beer cans. If you do this with one that still has full beer and it's not open, it can be quite messy. That's a joke, I'll edit that out. First cutting them out just roughly. These are very sharp. <laughs> Trust me. I trim them down to as close as I can get to that to that edge. I've made a few improvements to these since the first ones I made too in the process that uh, make them a lot easier to make and a lot better. You can also use other types of aluminum cans or uh, some soda cans and energy drink cans that are different thicknesses and sizes. You need to find the, the center and there's a couple ways of doing that and I find the easiest is just to take something like a, uh, a washer or anything you have round that you know is perfectly round that has a hole in it, like a small punch. And you, can, you can check to see how true it is to the center by just spinning it on something. Obviously the closer to the center you are the better the wheel it's going to make. So I try to be pretty careful with this step. Now you can just take the first one you did, take a sharpie, mark the center, turn it, about a quarter turn and mark it again, do that three times or so. I'm just turning the top one. Now the mark I have will be a little bit larger than the hole but it's easier to center. Now I know this one will be a lot closer to the true center. When I have one that I know is really good I'm gonna take this one and set it aside in a little baggie or something because it speeds up the process next time I need to make wheels. Now I can just Real quick. If you're a little nervous about doing it like this, uh, you can use a drill press too. That's how I did the first couple that I did. Because again, th this edge can be extremely sharp. The foam I'm using for these wheels are, that I've been using is this uh, EPP. It's actually three layers thick. Uh, it's packing material. Just take your can bottom and use it like a cookie cutter. And kind of important to this is that you make sure that you cut the entire way around because if you hold it a little crooked, it's only going to cut in one side. So I kind of purposely tilt it all the way around. It's only going to go so far down in because it's going to hit the bottom here. Put a bead of CA all the way around about maybe an eighth inch from the cut line and then a circle about the size of a dime on the on the center because that's all that's going to make contact and you have to get in place work fast press it down firm and level that's that's the key to this is keeping it level and it cures pretty fast on this foam okay if you do it and you look at it and you can see that it's really crooked you can spread the foam a little bit and put another drop of CA and push it down Make yourself a uh, small jig, and this is just a piece of wood. Use a drill press to drill down through it. Thicker would be better, but this this will work. Uh, and then take a nail and put the nail up through the bottom. Down. Make sure it's all the way flat against the wood surface. Take your top. your other side of your wheel, 
No. The cookie cutter. That on. And then just see see it on just like you did uh, to the first side. And hold it nice and firm and level, as level as you can get it. This actually doubles as a uh, way of marking off your foam. Try to keep the blade straight. This is three quarter inch outside diameter split loom. You can get this at auto parts stores, automotive specialty shops, electronic uh, dealers. Uh, and also, if you have a stereo shop nearby, if you, if you ask them, they probably wouldn't mind saving their pieces and get some uh, pieces that are more than long enough just off the floor. That's where I get mine. I turn it so the split is up top and make a cut halfway down about three ribs in and then cut it off. Spread it open with your thumb, start it over and all the way around. Now on the first ones I did, I, I went just to this edge and tucked it in. And you can do that if you want a larger diameter wheel. It gives you about an extra quarter inch size. But I don't think it looks as nice as if you go all the way up onto the can. You get a totally different look. And you go overlap it so you can see where to cut it. I usually start by making them a rib or two bigger than they need to be, because you can always trim it down. Now you can do this with hot glue, but it will melt the loom a little bit, I find. It's, you have to use a low temperature gun. Or you can use epoxy, works, works pretty well. But I'm going to use Gorilla Glue on these. Now this is the part that's a bit tricky. You get the first part on that has the, the extra tab up front. Now lift it up a little bit, put glue under it on the foam, and then and then past it about an inch on the foam and the sides. A little bit on the sides. Then put some on the top of the tab. A little bit. And what I do is I pull it and overlap it a little bit more than it needs to be, like maybe one or two rungs more, and take a piece of tape onto the wheel, and you want to pull that nice and tight. And now you get, now you make sure your ribs are lined up right, and. rubbing alcohol and a piece of paper towel and you can clean off the ink that's stamped on the bottom they have a date or whatever number on on the bottom of the can and that'll come off and this can will actually shine up really nice. using acorn nuts to hold them on to the bolts in my homemade landing gear with nylon washers on both sides and one of the nice things about these wheels too is that because they're so deep dish your uh, inside of your landing gear, your axle is actually hidden deep inside, you can see, and uh, gives a real nice look.